Hey guys, Hitman89 here. I hope everyone is doing great. Last week, we had the best PC games of 2023, and today, we're gonna be looking at the best open world games of all time. I'm not gonna make this intro longer than it needs to be, so let's get started. The very first Grand Theft Auto, aka GTA, was rough. The camera was a little too shaky and the controls were weird. GTA 2, on the other hand, was much more fun to play, and I remember you could press circle to fart and burp. Uh, 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 the good old days. Let me know your favorite GTA game in the comments down below. Mine is San Andreas, cause I feel like the amount of freedom we had there hasn't been reached again, even in GTA 5. The haircuts, the tattoos, the way you could get fat, skinny or buff based on the food you ate and how active you were, I miss those things. Recruiting gang members and driving around, or just listening to epic songs on your way to Las Venturas. Oh, and let's not forget about the memes. Oh shit, here we go again. Personally, I prefer the original PS2 version over the trilogy, the definitive edition we had a couple of years ago, just cause I feel like the graphical identity of the game was lost and replaced with some goofy cartoony shit. But gameplay wise, it's definitely better. As you can see, I got beaten to death by these identical hoes cause of how bad the controls were. Let's just move on to the second game. Back when Ubisoft games were great, we had Far Cry 2, a game where you could fix burning cars with a wrench and heal gunshot wounds with pliers. Far Cry 2 had a weapon durability system, a day and night cycle, and realistic fire. I love that game mechanics so much that I would unnecessarily make the game harder than it needed to be, cause sometimes the bad guys would be right in front of me, but instead of just shooting them, I would burn some grass, hide behind a rock and watch the fire slowly spread and burn those motherfuckers alive. Am I a little pyromaniac? You bet your ass I am. But that alone made Far Cry 2 so much more fun for me. Anyway, at number 3 we have Skyrim, which is better than Oblivion in pretty much every aspect. I kinda miss the hilariously bad dialogues though, but Skyrim's also got tons of memes like this one. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. This shit never gets old. The soundtrack is also epic, the amount of freedom you have in this game is absolutely insane. You can become whatever you want, and the leveling system was quite interesting, cause you basically got better at things just by doing them. When it comes to the loot system, what you see is what you get here. So every time you kill a guy, you get their armor, weapons, and basically everything they had on them. Speaking of which, for some reason, Skyrim made me want to steal every chance I had. Seriously, on this game, whenever somebody looks away, I have to steal something, even if it's just a spoon or a fork. Exploration is also a big part of the game, you come across some interesting locations, NPCs, and side quests just by exploring. Oh, and those dragon encounters were epic. Moving on to the next game, although it's 5 years old now, Red Dead Redemption 2 still looks stunning. The voice acting is dope, the story is great, but what makes this game even more memorable is the random encounters. I saved the guy's life, completely forgot about it, I did some story missions and some side missions as well, and then I met the same guy in a different town. I didn't even remember him until he told me I could buy anything I wanted from a nearby store and that he would pay for it cause I saved his life. I mean I spent an insane amount of time playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and I still come across YouTube videos showing NPCs and even cutscenes that I've never seen before. The attention to detail in this game is just mind blowing. Speaking of blowing minds, I love the gore system here. I wish GTA had the same. Apart from doing missions, you can hunt, maintain your weapons, clean your horse, say hi to random people, or you could just lasso them and drag them until they die. Now at number 5 we have The Witcher 3. And what I'm gonna say now might offend some people, especially those who put uh, The Witcher 3 on a pedestal, but I'ma say it anyway. I don't like the depressing, sad world, I think the combat system sucks, Geralt's animations are too stiff, and the options you have to interact with the world are severely limited. That being said, 8 years after its release, The Witcher 3 still looks amazing. Keep in mind you're looking at the latest next gen update on PS5. In my opinion, what made this game a big deal is the story, the writing, the characters, and the side quests that had more depth than most games had in their main quests. The Witcher 3 was so good, a lot of games straight up copied it. Speaking of which, at number 6 we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I honestly prefer this colorful, ancient Greece world, plus you can climb and go everywhere. You can also kill innocent people, pick up their corpses and throw them in fire, or put them on your horse and carry them with you everywhere you go, just to show everyone how much of a piece of shit you are. At least that's what I do. The ship battles are fun and they 
add variety to the gameplay. Speaking of variety, you can play this game however you want. Apart from the regular melee approach, you can use stealth and rely on assassinations, you can also take out your enemies from a distance using your bow, and you can climb high enough, wait for the enemies to come to you, and Spartan kick them one by one. That's the option I usually pick. Apart from being beautiful, Odyssey is huge. But just like Valhalla, the game feels bloated. That being said, out of Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla, this one is my favorite. We're gonna be leaving Ancient Greece for the Wastelands, cause the next game I wanna show you is Fallout. My first Fallout game was Fallout 3 and I loved it, but my favorite is New Vegas. And even though it felt like a big ass DLC, the amount of freedom it had compared to Fallout 3 and even Fallout 4 is insane. Children aside, this game allows you to straight up murder every single NPC you come across. And that's dope! I'm a psychopath, I know. I like the combat system. The vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, aka VODs, allows you to pause mid-combat, target specific body parts or weapons, and shoot them in slow motion. I really hope Starfield borrows some elements from Fallout. Now let's take a look at a stealth game for a change, cause the 8th game on my list is Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. Although it's meant to be a stealth game, you can also go guns blazing and get the job done. Both approaches are fun, but taking your time to scout the place, mark the enemies and come up with a plan is way more satisfying than just running over soldiers with a truck and blowing the place up. Cause apart from riding your horse, you can use any vehicle you find. And by find, I obviously mean hijack. At number 9 we have an RPG, a recent one. Elden Ring's open world is what makes it the easiest Souls game yet. Cause whenever you get stuck in a boss fight, you could just go explore a different area, level up and come back. Speaking of exploration, other than the sights of grace guiding you towards the next ones, the statues pointing towards dungeons, and the ghosts that lead you to treasures and hidden locations, there is no hand holding here. I mean this is one of those games you play while having YouTube open on your phone, ready to look up guides and tutorials. If you saw me play in Elden Ring, you'd probably think I'm a detective trying to solve a murder. There's always a piece of paper with a bunch of items written on it and tons of youtube videos playing on the secondary monitor trying to figure out what weapon i should use next let me know if you're like me and even though technically speaking the graphics suck the art style is what makes the lens between beautiful too bad there are a lot of recycled boss fights and the frame rate sucks dick now let's move on to the last game and in case you couldn't tell this list is in no particular order i just picked the 10 best games in my opinion and I was gonna put Breath of the Wild on this list, but since Tears of the Kingdom is pretty much bigger and better, I picked it instead. Well, the weapon durability system is definitely not better here. As a matter of fact, I feel like it's actually worse. But on this sandbox game, you have tools like Ultra Hand and Fuse, and they allow you to pick up objects, attach them to each other, and create useful stuff, means of transportation, and weapons. You can get as creative as you want here, and it feels good. Zelda is also proof that physics make open world games much more fun. There are tons of puzzles to solve in shrines, and even outside of shrines like when you have to help these cute creatures reach their friends. And even for someone like me who loves gore and violence, playing something like Tears of the Kingdom is really enjoyable. By the way, if you've never played this or Breath of the Wild, videos don't do these games justice man you have to actually play them for yourself and see how fun they can be before i end this video here are a couple of honorable mentions mad max is a truly underrated game and it deserves to be played even in 2023 minecraft didn't make the list either but i spent hundreds of hours playing it and it's just awesome and that's gonna be it for the best open world games of all time. Let me know in the comments down below if you think I missed some good ones. And if you find this video useful or entertaining, please hit the thumbs up button and maybe subscribe if you want to see more game reviews and top 10 videos every week. It's been Hitman89. See you guys very soon.